The following story is based on eyewitness accounts of the life of Jesus, as recorded in the Gospels of Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. It is narrated by Mary Magdalene, whom the scriptures name as a follower of Jesus. Her narration dramatically and accurately recounts the true story of this man who lived 2,000 years ago. An actor plays the part of Jesus. Although no actor is worthy of this role, it has been done so we may understand and benefit from the life of Jesus. is the masterpiece God paints every evening. It reminds me of his vast love for me, for you. The God who created all of this. I doubt he even sees me, much less knows me. Perhaps God Almighty would love a holy man, but not someone like me. Rivka, if only you had walked with me during those three years he taught us. The prophet Jesus. Sophia. Would you tell us about him, Mary Magdalene? Yes, please tell us your story. <laughs> yes, I will. Come in. We must start at the beginning. When you met Jesus? No. In order to understand Jesus' story, we must start at the very beginning, as the Holy Scriptures teach us. In the beginning, God created the earth and all the plants, animals, birds and creatures of the sea. From the soil, he formed the first man, and he breathed into his nostrils the breath of life. The first man was called Adam. God said, it is not good for man to live alone. I will make a suitable companion to help him. So God took one of Adam's ribs, and from it, he made a woman named Eve, not out of his head to rule over him, nor out of his feet to be trampled upon by him, but out of his side to be equal with him, and his arm to be protected, and near his heart to be beloved. The God of love created man and woman to reflect God's image and to live in harmony with him. He gave them authority to rule over creation together. Adam and Eve lived in God's presence in a beautiful garden he had prepared for them, called Eden. God walked and talked with them in the garden, and there was no suffering, no oppression, and no death. God told Adam, you may eat of all the trees in the garden, except from the tree of the knowledge of good, and evil. If you eat fruit from that tree, you will die. But one day, Satan tempted Eve. She picked the fruit and took a bite. She also gave some to her husband, who was with her, and
and he ate it. Adam and Eve's shameful act of disobedience destroyed the harmony of the garden. The harmony between the man and the woman, and the harmony between them and God. The man was cursed to a life of painful toil, and the woman to increased hardship in childbirth, and to be ruled over by her husband. But God also gave a promise that someday the seed of the woman, her own offspring, would crush the snake's head. In the Holy Scriptures, God the Compassionate speaks of a plan to restore harmony and honor to his creation. He revealed part of this plan to the prophet Abraham. Abraham trusted and honored God, and God promised to bless Abraham and to bless people of all nations through him. He promised to give him many descendants, as many as the grains of sand on the seashore and the stars in the sky. Abraham believed God, so God esteemed Abraham as one of his righteous servants and called him friend of God. One day, God tested Abraham. He told Abraham to take his son and sacrifice him. Abraham knew that it was through this son God had promised to give him many descendants and bless all nations, yet he trusted God and obeyed him. God called out, Abraham, now I know that you obey me because you have not kept back your beloved son from me. Abraham saw a ram nearby, so Abraham sacrificed it to God instead of his son. God's provision of a ram in place of Abraham's son was a picture, a glimpse of his great plan. This plan would destroy the curse of sin and death and restore men and women to an intimate relationship with himself. The Holy Scriptures speak of one who was to come. He would be the ultimate sacrifice for the sins of the world. The prophets called this person the Messiah. His coming would bring great blessing for he would be a savior, a prophet, and a king. Isaiah described what the Messiah would do when he came. The Lord's anointed will bring good news to the poor, heal the brokenhearted, announce release to captives, and freedom to those in prison, and proclaim that the time has come when the Lord will save his people. A teacher walked this earth whose name was Jesus. Was he the one sent by God to crush the snake's head, to pour light into our world of darkness and replace our curse with blessing? Could he be the promised Messiah? Could he redeem someone who feels afraid or ashamed or unimportant? There was a young girl living in Nazareth who was promised in marriage to a man named Joseph. Her name was Mary. The Lord is with you and has greatly blessed you. Don't be afraid, Mary. God has been gracious to you. You will become pregnant and give birth to a son, and you will name him Jesus. But I am a virgin. 
How can this be? The Holy Spirit will come, and God's power will overshadow you. The child you bear will be great, and he will be called the Son of the Most High. Even Elizabeth, your relative, is going to have a child in her old age. And she who was said to be barren is in her sixth month. For nothing is impossible with God. I am the Lord's servant. May it happen to me as you have said. So Mary hurried to visit her cousin, Elizabeth. Elizabeth! Mary? Cousin Mary! Oh, it is true. But you are the most blessed of all women. And blessed is the child you will bear. Why should this great thing happen to me? That the mother of my Lord comes to visit me. For as soon as I heard your greeting, the baby within me jumped with gladness. <laughs> my heart praises the Lord. My soul is glad because of God, my Savior. For he has remembered me, his lowly servant. From now on, all people will call me blessed. Mary stayed with Elizabeth for three months. When Joseph found his promised wife pregnant, he planned to divorce her quietly. But God sent an angel to Joseph in a dream. Do not be afraid to take Mary home as your wife, for it is by the Holy Spirit that she has conceived. She'll give birth to a son, and you will name him Jesus, because he will save his people from their sins. So Joseph took Mary as his wife. Jesus was born in Bethlehem, in a place where animals were kept, because there was no room for Mary and Joseph in their relative's house. And a multitude of angels proclaimed his birth. When the time came for the baby to be circumcised, he was given the name Jesus, which means God saves. And Mary and Joseph took the child to the temple to present him to the Lord. A prophet named Simeon met them there. This child is chosen by God for the falling and rising of many. There will be a sign from God which many people will speak against and so reveal their secret thoughts. And sorrow, like a sharp sword, will pierce your own heart. When I heard her story, I knew Jesus would be more than an ordinary prophet. What did the angel mean when he called Jesus the Son of the Most High? Surely you don't mean that God had relations with a woman? No, 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 no. Remember, Mary was a virgin. Jesus' conception was truly a miracle from the Spirit of God. God is able to do anything. Don't you believe this? 
Because of his miraculous beginnings, Jesus was born of a woman like you and me. Yet he was so much more. Turn away from your sins and be baptized and God will forgive your sins. God himself spoke of this when Elizabeth's son, John the Baptist, was baptizing men and women in the Jordan River. I baptize you with water. But someone is coming who is much greater than I am. I'm not good enough even to untie his sandals. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. He has his threshing fork with him to thresh out all the grain and gather the wheat into his barn. And the Holy Spirit came down upon Jesus in the form of a dove. And a voice came from heaven and said, You are my own dear son. I am pleased with you. After his baptism, Jesus traveled through the region teaching and his message affirmed his authority. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, because he has chosen me to bring good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim release to the captives and recovery of sight to the blind, to set at liberty those who are oppressed, and announce that the time has come when the Lord will save his people. This passage of scripture has come true today, as you heard it being read. The scripture come true? But only the Messiah can fulfill that promise. How shall we know? Doubtless you his words God. stirred many to wonder. And his miracles caused many to believe. <laughs> She's at it again. <laughs> Who is it? It's that teacher from Nazareth. Jesus. Hello. Hello. Turn around. You're not wanted here. Teacher, leave her. You should not defile yourself by even looking at her. Mary. Ah, what do you want with us, Jesus of Nazareth? We know who you are, the Holy One of God. Be quiet. Evil spirits. Come out of this woman! She's dead. He's killed her. He's going to touch her. No, a holy man wouldn't do such a thing. Mary, daughter of Abraham. Daughter of Abraham. She's all right. She's alive. It's a miracle. Who is this man? 
Even the spirits obey him. It's a miracle. It's a miracle. How could it be? became his follower. I wanted to do what pleased God. in shame but Jesus restored my honor his power drove out those evil spirits Sephira Dinah you heard Jesus teach and saw many of his miracles yes then you know why I left everything to follow him and I was not the only one There were his disciples, Simon Peter, Bartholomew, Matthew, Judas Iscariot, and the rest of the twelve. And women, Susanna, Joanna, myself, and others who contributed from our own households to support Jesus and his disciples. We all hoped God had finally sent the Messiah we longed for. We certainly needed a savior. Rome ruled us with an iron fist. They took everything dear to us and taxed what little was left. We were hungry physically and spiritually, and we needed someone to show us the way to God. After years of disappointment and struggle, most of us were unable even to hope. Yet Jesus seemed to offer hope wherever he went. Blessed are you, poor, for yours is the kingdom of God. Blessed are you who hunger now, for you shall be filled. Blessed are you who weep now, for you shall laugh. Blessed are you when men hate you and reject you and insult you, and say you are evil all because of the Son of Man. Be glad when that happens and dance for joy, because a great reward is kept for you in heaven, for their ancestors did the very same thing to the prophets. 16, 17, 18, 19... 20. That's all I got. What do you mean? That's all you got. How terrible got. for you who are rich now. You have had your easy life. <laughs> he 
He doesn't want to be rich. He must be mad. <laughs> How terrible for you who laugh now, for you shall mourn and weep. How terrible when all men speak well of you. For their ancestors said the very same thing about the false prophets. But I tell you who hear me, love your enemies. Do good to those who hate you. Bless those who curse you. And pray for those who mistreat you. If anyone strikes you on the one cheek, let him hit the other also. And if someone takes away your coat, let him have your shirt as well. Give to everyone who asks you for something. And if someone takes what is yours, do not ask for it back again. Do for others only what you'd have others do for you. If you love only the people who love you, why should you receive a blessing? For even sinners love those who love them. And if you do good to those who do good to you, why should you receive a blessing? Even sinners do that. How could he touch her? How could he talk to her? Disgusting. No. Love your enemies and do good to them and lend expecting nothing back. And then you will have a great reward. For you will be sons of the Most High God. For he is good to the ungrateful and to the wicked. Be merciful, just as your father is merciful. Save us, Jesus! Judge not, and you will not be judged. Condemn not, and you will not be condemned. Forgive, and you will be forgiven. Lead us in your path, Lord. Give, and it will be given to you. For the measure you give will be the measure you get back. One blind man cannot lead another. If he does, they will both fall into a ditch. Why do you see the speck that is in your brother's eye but pay no attention to the log in your own eye? Guide us, Master! We need you now, Lord! How happy is the mother who bore you and nursed you? <laughs> Rather, how happy are those who hear the word of God and obey it. Jesus taught that God treats even the worst sinners not as enemies to destroy, but as lost sheep whom he seeks to rescue and restore to his flock. We didn't know this way of valuing and loving people was meant even for those we had despised for centuries. Half-breeds with foreign traditions we found offensive until Jesus chose to travel through Samaria. Who is this woman the old despise? She's a Samaritan. Isn't that enough? <laughs> <laughs> Come on. We have to buy food, and we don't want to keep the teacher waiting. give me a drink. You are a Jew. I am a Samaritan woman. How can you ask me for a drink? <laughs> if you only knew what God gives and who it is that is asking you for a drink, you would ask him and he would give you life-giving water. Sir, you have nothing to draw water with and the well is deep. Where would you get that water? It was our ancestor Jacob who gave us this well. He and his children and his flocks all drank from it. You don't claim to be greater than Jacob, do you? 
Everyone who drinks this water will get thirsty again. But whoever drinks the water I give them will never be thirsty again. The water I give them will become in them a spring, welling up with eternal life. Sir, give me that water. Then I will never be thirsty again. Nor will I have to come here to draw water. Go and call your husband and come back. I... I don't have a husband. You are right when you say you don't have a husband. You have been married to five men. And the man you live with now is not really your husband. You have told me the truth. I see you are a prophet, sir. My Samaritan ancestors worshipped God on this mountain. But you Jews say Jerusalem is the place where we should worship God. Believe me, woman, the time will come when you will worship the Father neither on this mountain nor in Jerusalem. You Samaritans do not really know whom you worship. But the time is coming and is already here when by the power of God's Spirit people will worship the Father as he really is offering him the pure worship that he wants. God is spirit, and only by the power of his spirit can people worship him as he truly is. It's that woman. What is he doing talking to her? Does he know who she is? I know the Messiah will come. And when he does, he will tell us everything. I am he. I am he. Come and see the man who told me everything I've ever done. Could he be the Messiah? Messiah? The promised prophet? No, it can't be. Come and see. Come! Teacher, have something to eat. I have food to eat that you know nothing about. Did someone bring him food? My food is to obey the will of the one who sent me and to finish the work he gave me to do. The crops are now ripe and ready to be harvested. Look how many are coming. It's the good news for Samaritans too. to Jesus and begged him to stay and teach them. We stayed two days and many Samaritans believed in him. Ask and you will receive. Seek and you will find. Knock and the door will be open to you. For everyone who asks will receive. And he who seeks will find and the door will be open to anyone who knocks. <laughs> Would any of you who are fathers give to your son a snake when he asks for a fish? Or a scorpion when he asks for an egg? As bad as you are, you know how to give good things to your children. How much more then will the Heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to those who ask him? I tell you this, take no thought in your life for what you shall eat, nor for your body what you shall wear. For life is more than food, and the body more than clothing. Consider the ravens. 
They neither sow nor reap, have neither storehouse nor barn. Yet God feeds them. Of how much more worth are you than the birds? Which of you, by being anxious, can add to the length of your life? If you cannot do such a small thing, why do you worry about the rest? Consider the lilies, how they grow. They neither toil nor spin. Yet Solomon in all his glory was not dressed like a single one of them. If God so clothes the wild grass today which tomorrow is thrown onto a fire, how much more sure is he to clothe you? Oh, you of little faith. Make our faith greater. If you had faith as big as a mustard seed, you could say to this mulberry tree, pull yourself up by the roots and plant yourself in the sea and it would obey you. Temptations to sin are sure to come, but woe to him by whom they come. It will be better for him that a stone were tied about his neck and he were cast into the sea than that he should cause one of these little ones to sin. What is the kingdom of God like? It is like this. A man takes a grain of mustard seed and plants it in his field. The plant grows and becomes a tree and the birds make their nests in its branches. I'm not sure what he's talking about. <laughs> Why do you eat and drink with tax collectors and other outcasts? Outcasts? <laughs> People who are well do not need a doctor, but only those who are sick. I have not come to call respectable people to repent, but outcasts. He's coming! He's here! Look! Jesus! Jesus! I beg you to save my only daughter. Sir, have mercy. She's only 12 years old and, and dying. Please, please, come with me. If I can only touch his robe, I will be healed. Jairus, I'm sorry. Leave him alone, Jairus. Jesus! Your daughter has died. Don't bother the teacher any longer. Don't be afraid. Only believe and she will be well. Only believe and she will be well. Who touched me? Someone touched me, for I knew it when power went out of me. suffered for 12 years with bleeding. Uh, I spent all I had on doctors who could do nothing. But when my fingers touched your robe, uh, I was healed. Daughter. Your faith has made you well. Go in peace. Go in peace. her daughter? Yes, someone who had been unclean for 12 years according to our laws. He saw her shame and restored her honor. 
I don't know which brings greater healing, Jesus' power or his compassion. Do not weep. She's not dead, but only sleeping. Child, arise. something to eat. Listen to me. Tell no one what has happened here. She's alive. The master's daughter. The teacher brought her back to life. God be praised. She's alive. News traveled of his amazing miracles. And more and more people began to follow Jesus. Master, send the people away, so then they can go to the villages and farms around here and find food and lodging. There's nothing in this place. You yourselves give them something to eat. But all we have are five loaves and two fish. Blessed are you, O Lord our God, King of the universe, who brings forth bread from the earth. We all ate until we were full, and when we gathered what was left over, we filled twelve baskets. An amazing miracle that reminded us of the blessings Jesus brings, and that we are to follow him. First, let me go and say goodbye to my family. Anyone who starts to plow and then keeps looking back is of no use for the kingdom of God. If anyone wants to come with me, he must forget himself. Take up his cross every day and follow me. For whoever would save his own life will lose it. And whoever would lose his life for my sake will save it. What will it profit a man if he gain the whole earth and lose his own soul? If any man is ashamed of me and my teachings, then the Son of Man will be ashamed of him when he comes in his glory, and the glory of the Father and the holy angels. I assure you, there are some here who will not die until they have seen the kingdom of God. Do 
not be afraid, little flock, for your father is pleased to give you the kingdom. Sell all your belongings and give the money to the poor. Provide for yourself purses that don't wear out and save your riches in heaven where they will never decrease because there no thief can get to them and no moth can destroy them. For your heart will always be where your riches are. Woman, you are free from your sickness. There are six days in which we should work. So come on one of those days to be healed, but not on the Sabbath. You hypocrites. Any one of you would untie his ox or his donkey and take it out from the stall to give it water on the Sabbath. Now here is this daughter of Abraham whom Satan has kept in bonds these 18 years. Should she not be released on the Sabbath? The Roman authorities and our religious leaders were alarmed at Jesus' following. I understand that many have already hailed him as king. A king? <laughs> A king of beggars, whores and thieves. We've seen his kind before. They come, they make their claims, they go. They're forgotten. Don't be blind. His following is growing by the day. The people admire him. And think he is a king. Let me give you a warning. If this man should threaten the peace further, I shall look to you. Perhaps he's right. It's time we confronted the Galilean. It's very little. Only two small coins. Can't you give more? I tell you that this poor widow put in more than all the others. For the others offered their gifts from what they had to spare of their riches. But she, poor as she is, put in all that she had to live on. Tell us, what right do you have to say these things? Who gave you such right? Now let me ask you a question. Tell me, did John's right to baptize come from God or from man? We don't know where it came from. Neither will I tell you then by what right I do these things. But rather than recognizing Jesus' compassion, those against him only wished to find a reason to accuse him. committing adultery. In our law, Moses commanded that such a woman be stoned to death. Yes. Stone her. Harlot. Guilty. Yes. Stone, stone, her. stone her. Stone her. Stone her. Stone her. What do you say? Teacher, we have the testimony of two witnesses. <laughs> what do we do with this woman? Where is the man? The law says he's to be tried as well.
Whichever one of you has committed no sin, let him throw the first stone at her. Is there no one left to condemn you? No one, sir. Then neither do I condemn you. Then neither do I condemn you. Neither do I condemn you. the law. A sower went out to sow his seed. Breaking the Sabbath. And as he scattered the grain, some of it fell by the path. Cavorting with sinners. If we let him go on in this way, everyone will believe in him, and the Roman authorities will take action and destroy our temple. And some seeds fell in good soil. They failed to trap Jesus or slow his following, but they determined that his claims to be the promised Messiah must stop. And they found someone willing to betray him. Jesus often took his followers to the Mount of Olives to pray. That night, he seemed deeply troubled. Why are you sleeping? Get up and pray that you do not fall into temptation. Did you have to come with swords and clubs as though I were an outlaw? I was with you every day in the temple and you did not try to arrest me. But this is your hour to act. When the power of darkness rules. Arrest him! His friend betrayed him? One of his own followers? Someone we all knew well and trusted. Guard him well. That night, the guards mocked him and beat him. Who hit you? Guess. Prophesy. Who hit you next? <laughs> Stop it! Stop it, I said. Bring him before the council.
tell us, are you the Messiah? If I tell you, you will not believe me. And if I ask you a question, you will not answer me. But from now on, the Son of Man will be seated at the right side of Almighty God. Are you then the Son of God? You say that I am. He has spoken blasphemy. What further need have we of witnesses? Who gives him the authority to say? No, you've heard his blasphemy. Guilty. We ourselves have heard what he said. He guilty and he deserves to die. We will take him to Pilate. Yes, yes. Away with him. So they brought him before the Roman governor, Pontius Pilate. A ruthless ruler, Pilate was responsible for the crucifixion of thousands. And what do you want here at this hour of the morning? We caught this man misleading our people. He caused an uproar in the temple market. We found him guilty, telling them not to pay taxes to the emperor, claiming himself the Messiah, a king. A king? Are you the king of the Jews? So you say. We have no king but the emperor. We have a law, and by our law, he ought to die, because he claimed to be the son of God. This man has done nothing to deserve death. So I will have him whipped and let him go. If you free him, you are no friend to the Emperor. You, you, whip him! Everyone who claims to be a king is a rebel against the emperor. What are you waiting for, pilot? Away with him! <gasps> Kill him! <gasps> Crucify him! He's done nothing wrong! <laughs>
drink this drink. Yes, drink it. Women of Jerusalem, don't weep for me. But weep for yourselves and for your children. But if such things as these take place when the wood is green, what will happen when it is dry? God help you! We will pray for you. is cursed by God. Sorrow, like a sharp sword, will pierce my heart. <laughs> and sorrow, like a sharp sword, will pierce your own heart. same sentence he did but he has done no wrong remember me Jesus when you when you come as king I promise you today you will be in paradise with me became dark for three hours. Father, into your hands I commit 
My spirit. Glory be to God. Certainly, this was a righteous man. There was a righteous member of the religious council who had not taken part in condemning Jesus. His name was Joseph of Arimathea. He obtained permission from Pontius Pilate to lay Jesus' body in a nearby tomb before the Sabbath began at sundown. Forgive us. We are following the body of our Lord. All are welcome. But come, the Sabbath is approaching. Why did they have to kill him? If he was from God, why did he let them kill him? I've asked all of those questions. Jesus had power over evil spirits. Even the dead listened to him. Couldn't he have stopped this? I followed him for three years, hoping he was the promised Messiah. But now he was gone. And where would I go? This is a sad story. But it has a glorious ending. Early on Sunday morning, the third day after Jesus was crucified, we went back to the tomb carrying the spices we had prepared to anoint his body. The stone's been rolled away. Peter, James, John, listen! The stone was rolled away. We entered, but the body of our Lord was gone. They have taken the Lord from the tomb, and we don't know where they have put him. What? The body of our Lord gone? Go and see for yourself. After examining the tomb, Peter returned to the other disciples. But I remained outside, wondering and weeping. <laughs> the soldiers must have taken him. Or the Pharisees. They killed all we hoped for. At least they could have left us his body. Crying. 
They've taken my lord away. And I do not know where they have put him. Woman, why are you crying? Who is it that you are looking for? Sir, if you took him away, tell me where you have put him, and I will go and get him. Mary. Teacher. Do not hold on to me, for I have not yet ascended to the Father. You are alive, Lord. Go and give this news to my brothers. You have not forgotten us. God has not left us. Tell them. Oh, I have seen the Lord. I have seen the Messiah. <laughs> he came back to life? Yes. How? Death could not hold him. Then why did he have to die? To conquer death. Oh, I, I did not understand that day. But Jesus appeared to us several times after that. And he taught us. Hundreds of years before Jesus came, the prophets foretold in the scriptures that the promised Messiah would suffer. Isaiah wrote, He was pierced for our transgressions. He was crushed for our iniquities. The punishment that brought us peace was upon him, and by his wounds we are healed. The prophet Moses declared, Anyone hanging on a tree is cursed by God. When Jesus died on the cross, he took upon himself our curse, my curse of sin and death. His sacrifice and resurrection freed us from the clutch of evil, rescued us from the power of darkness, and redeemed us from a life of fear and shame. This blessing is what God promised our ancestor Abraham when he declared that all people on earth would be blessed through him. All people? Even women? Jesus called me a daughter of Abraham. You are a cherished daughter. A daughter he wishes to bless like the woman he healed from 12 years of bleeding. Or like me. None of us need to live in fear or shame. We no longer need to feel unseen or unheard. Jesus said of himself, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, because he has chosen me to bring good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim release to the captives and recovery of sight to the blind. To set at liberty those who are oppressed. And announce that the time has come when the Lord will save his people. Jesus touched people, even women ravaged by diseases, though they were considered unclean. And he healed them. He taught children, men and women, the rich and the poor, the righteous and the sinner, restoring their dignity and demonstrating his great compassion. He healed people, casting out demons, freeing men, women and children from the bonds of Satan. This demonstrated his authority over evil and every spirit. Jesus brought back daughters and sons from the dead showing his power even over death and though satan and the evil spirits believed they had achieved the victory when they nailed jesus to the cross jesus rose from the dead triumphing over all the powers of evil and death then he was the messiah mm -hmm. only the promised messiah 
sent from Almighty God, could do the miraculous things that Jesus did. And only someone as compassionate and powerful and trustworthy as Jesus deserves our trust and devotion. When God created the world, he formed man and woman to live in his presence and feel his joy. That was his plan. But we didn't believe him and disobeyed his command. This shameful act separated us from God and marred the close relationship between the woman and the man. We too have continued this disobedience. The scriptures declare, there is no one who does not sin. The result of this sin is death and separation from God. But God was not satisfied for us to remain cut off from him and his love, living in shame and fear. So, just as he provided a ram to die in place of Abraham's son, God sent Jesus to die in our place. Jesus' life, death and resurrection restored the relationship between God and all those who turn and follow him. And this close relationship with Almighty God will not end, even though we die. The criminal on the cross, as he was dying, believed in Jesus. And Jesus promised him, Today you will be in paradise with me. Those who put their trust in Jesus will escape eternal punishment and live with God forever. How? by following him in faith. But how can he accept me? He accepted Mary and me. How can I know? Trust him. Ask him. Talk to him. God, my Father in heaven, you are holy and righteous. Thank you that you love me. I have sinned against you. Thank you that you sent the promised Messiah, Jesus, to destroy the curse of shame and guilt. Thank you that he died in my place. I want to follow my living Savior. Thank you for forgiving me and accepting me. who follow and we tell others about him keeping in mind what Jesus said the Lord bless you and keep you all power is given to me in heaven and in earth go then and teach all nations baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit teaching them to observe all things I have commanded you. And surely I am with you always, even to the end of the world.